Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So last week, or actually the week before last week, uh, we took the statement of the Arthur alayhi rahmatullah, wa alam rahimakullah, anna ad-deen innama jaa min qibali Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. He said, no one realized, may Allah have mercy upon you, that the religion, it only came from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Lam yudha' ala uqood al-rijali wa a'ra'im. The religion was not placed upon the intellects and the views of men. Wa ilmuhu inda Allah wa inda Rasulih. His knowledge is with Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَا تَتَّبِعْ شَيْئًا بِهَوَاكِ So do not follow anything based upon your desire. فَتَمْرُقَ مِنَ الدِّينِ فَتَخْرُجَ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ And thus, you go astray from the religion and you leave Islam. فَإِنَّهُ لَا حُجَّةَ لَكَ You have no proof or evidence for this. فَقَدْ بَيَّنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأُمَّتِهِ السُنَّةِ the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has clarified to his ummah the sunnah. And he made it crystal clear to his companions. And the companions are al-jama'ah. And they are al-sawad al-a'adham. And what's implied by al-sawad al-a'adham is the truth and its people. فَمَنْ خَالَفَ أَصْحَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ أَمْرِ الدِّينِ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ Whoever opposes the companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in anything as it relates to the religion, then he has committed kufr. And as we mentioned in the last class, we're going to explain what's intended, intended by kufr. Because it's not unrestricted like this. It's not necessarily a major disbelief. لكن هناك الكفر أكبر وهناك كفر أصغر. لا هذا الشيخ سي لا لا تستعجل الشيخ سي يوضح هذه العبارة. so last class last class uh, we took some benefits from the initial part of the statement. The religion it only came from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and it was not placed upon the intellects and the views of men. We took the famous statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu where he said, Lo kana deen bil ra'i la kana asfalu al khuf awla bil mashi min a'la. And this is something that a person really has to think about. He said, if the religion was based upon a person's view or how what a person thought, then the bottom of the khuf, it would be more appropriate to wipe that as opposed to the top. Because when a person's walking, where is the filth going? At the bottom of your khuf or your sock or whatever you're wearing. He said it would be more appropriate to wipe the bottom of your khuf than the top. وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَمْسَهُ عَلَى ظَاهِرِ الْخُفَيْ He said, however, I saw the Messenger of Allah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ wiping over the top of his khuf. So this shows us that the religion is not based upon what one thinks. It's based upon nas. It's based upon text. Whatever the Messenger وسلم, conveyed to us from the Book of Allah and His Sunnah, then that's how it is. It's not based upon what we think. It's not based upon our view. It's based upon text from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet And we also touch on this point, which is that when it comes to issues of the religion, is based upon tawqif. Muruddin tawqifiyya. What was implied by that very quickly? Muruddin tawqifiyya. I just basically just said it before I even asked the question. Uh, when it comes to uh, anything that you want to do in the religion, you have to have something to back it up. Uh, proof and evidence from where? The Quran and the Sunnah. So the religion has to be based upon text. It's restricted to what has come in the book and the Sunnah. And it's not based upon opinions or innovations or newly invented matters. Likewise, we took uh, the two conditions for the acceptance of one's deeds very quickly. 
we, when we was doing the explanation for the 40 hadith, we took this I don't know how many times, but at this point, everyone should have it down pat. What are the two conditions for the acceptance of one's good deeds? There's two conditions that have to be met. Similar to like when a person wants to go to get his license, he has to be a certain age, he has to pass a test, these are conditions. So in order for your good deed to be accepted, what are those two prerequisites that have to be met for it to be accepted? Now, it has to be done sincerely for Allah in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet So we're going to continue where we left off. قوله عليه رحمة الله فلا تتبع شيئا بهواك So his statement where he said, so do not follow anything based upon your desire. So in the explanation or the commentary, Shaykh Fuzan, he says, لا تتبع شيئا بهواك ورغبتك He just reiterated his statement. Do not follow anything based upon your want and your desire. ولكن يكون هواك ورغبتك تابعيني لما جاء عن الله ورسوله فلا تهوى إلا ما جاء عن الله ورسوله ولا ترغب إلا ما جاء عن الله ورسوله هذا هو سبيل النجاة So a person, right, he's addressing us, the person who's listening, don't follow anything based upon your want and desire. Your desire and your want, it has to follow what has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore do not follow anything that has not come from Allah and His Messenger. You shouldn't desire or want anything that has not come from Allah and His Messenger. This is the path of salvation. This is the way of being saved. If you follow your desire, then you will be amongst those who follow their desires. And you will not be of those who follow the revelation that has been revealed. قال تعالى فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And he mentions the verse, And if they do not respond to you, or if they do not answer you, and this is with regard to the Prophet ﷺ, فَعْلَمْ Then realize and know that they only follow their desires. وَمَنْ أَضَلُّوا مِمَّنِ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ And who is more astray? Then the one who follows his desire without guidance from Allah. In Allah la yahdil qawm al-zalimin. Indeed Allah does not guide al-zalimun. He does not guide those who are oppressors. Wa qala ta'ala, fahkum baynahum bima anzal Allah. And judge them or judge between them with that which Allah has revealed. Wa la tattabi' ahwa'ahum amma ja'aka min al-haq. And do not follow their desire instead of that which has come to you of the truth. قال تعالى ثم جعلناك على شريعة من الأمر فاتبعها ولا تتبع أهواء الذين لا يعلمون And likewise the statement of Allah, the meaning of which And then we place you, meaning Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Upon a legislation from our command So therefore follow it and do not follow their desires Do not follow the desires of those who do not know they cannot avail you or benefit you against Allah. And the oppressors are allies to one another. And Allah is the ally of those who are righteous. The Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Salih al Fawzan, he says, So therefore, you're between two affairs. Either you're going to follow the religion that's correct, the, the sound, correct religion, or either you're going to follow your evil lusts and desires, and there's not a third option. And the same of the Arthur, where he said, and thus you go astray from the religion and you leave Islam. So the person, and pay attention to this point, because we live in a time where some of us might personally know of individuals, maybe even family members who are Muslim, or we might know of Muslim brothers or Muslim sisters. And these might be individuals who at one point you would consider or deem them to be very religious. You always see them in the masjid, 
You see them performing the nawafil, the voluntary prayers, reading the Quran, so on and so forth. And then as time went on, you stop seeing that diligence. You stop seeing that religiosity. And in some cases, the person might have left the religion in totality and not even practicing anymore. If you were to ask them if they're a Muslim, they say, they'll say, I'm not a Muslim. You ask them if they pray, some of them might even say, I don't do that anymore. So what's the reason for this type of deviation? The Sheikh, Sheikh Fozan, he says, the person who follows his desire, he's going to go astray from the religion. Even if it takes a long time. Even if it takes a long time. That's the first thing. Don't think when you see a person who went astray that it happened overnight. If you see a person who you deem to be righteous or religious and then, you know, after some time they went astray or in some cases they even apostated, don't think that that was something that happened overnight. He said the first thing is that a person becomes laxadaisuku when it comes to al mukhalifa Things that are in opposition to religion. Sins, acts of disobedience, so on and so forth. Walhawa. And a person's evil desires. ثُمَّ يَتَعَظَمُ اتِّبَاعُ الْهَوَى إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْرُجَ مِنَ الدِّينِ So what happens next? Then that person following his desires, it gets greater. So initially, you know, a person just being lackadaisical. A person, for example, he's diligent when it comes to making his sunnah prayers. He stops performing his sunnah prayers. We're not going to say that's mukhalifa. We're not going to say that's mukhalifa. A person, initially, he's making his sunnah prayers. He's making all 12 of those highly recommended voluntary prayers. After some time, he's not making his sunnah prayers. After some time, he's getting lackadaisical when it comes to listening to the haram. Or looking at the haram. And then after a while, it gets to the point that it gets severe. In terms of him following his desires and lusts. Until the point that he leaves the religion. Ibn Hajar, alayhi rahmatullah, he mentioned, Qila al-ma'asi barid al-kufr. He mentioned, it was said, it has, been, it has been stated, that sins lead to disbelief. Sins lead to disbelief. And it's fear for the person who is persistent upon sins. Right? He's constantly committing sins that he's going to have a bad ending. And I've mentioned this example numerous times for the brothers who were here in the explanation of the 40 hadith. I mentioned this example before. And for those who never heard this before, this is just something to contemplate and reflect upon. I personally knew of an individual who studied overseas. He studied in Yemen for about four years. He was a revert. He wasn't born Muslim. So he went and he studied in Yemen for about four years. This individual, before he went to study, Wallahi, if you see this, 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 this individual always smiling, uh, you know, very studious, was apparent he seemed very religious. So he went to Yemen, he, he benefited greatly. He almost memorized the entire Qur'an in less than four years. He almost memorized the entire Qur'an in less than four years. Arabic wasn't his first language. When he came back, his Arabic was so fluent, he spoke Arabic as though he was Yemeni. And I'm not saying that for myself. Uh, I've seen uh, a brother from Saudi, a brother from Saudi Arabia. He spoke to him, and after he spoke to him, he said, this guy, he speaks like he's Yemeni. That's how good his Arabic was. So after this individual came back to the States, he came back to America, he was giving khitabah, he was giving khutbahs, he was giving lectures, he was giving classes. I went to Medina. Within a year or so, I found out that he apostated. I found out that he apostated. So when I came back, to, to the States, which was maybe like three years later, I, I actually met him in person. I met him in person. And subhanAllah, it's scary, wallah, when you see a person that you used to look, almost, you, you look up to him, because what he's doing in terms of 
seeking knowledge and being diligent and, and engaging himself in the worship of Allah and so on and so forth. It's scary. You see a person like that and then you see him afterwards. He had khamr on his breath. He literally had alcohol on his breath. And he had a tattoo on his arm. He had ayat. He didn't have this before. Before Islam, he had some tattoos on his, his arm or whatever the case was. But he had a tattoo, a tattoo that he did after he apostated. And it was a verse from the Quran. And when I spoke to him, I was speaking to him in Arabic. And Allah, he could barely put two sentences together. But the thing that he could say, he said, That's what he said. He said, this language, meaning the Arabic language, it doesn't benefit me. It doesn't benefit me. So how did this brother, or he's not a brother now, but how did this individual go from being in this type of situation where you could say, subhanAllah, he's on a pathway to go to paradise, to being on a pathway that's going to hellfire, to the hellfire forever. It was said to me, or it was told to me, when he came back, he started getting lackadaisical. He started hanging out with some non-Muslim relatives of his. He was smoking reefer, he was smoking weed. And, and, and keep in mind, while all of this is going on, he's still giving khutub, he's giving sermons, he get, he's giving muhadarat, he's giving lectures, he's giving classes, but nobody knows about this, except for the people who are really close to him. So this is this point that is being mentioned right here is very, very serious. Don't take sins, or don't think, or consider sins to be something small. Yeah, you, maybe, perhaps... It might be a small sin. It starts out as a small sin. But if a person doesn't control himself, doesn't make a sincere repentance, and he doesn't rectify himself, well, lie can lead to some serious matters, and perhaps it could even lead to apostasy. Iyadu billah. So this is what uh, Sheikh Fawzan, he mentions. That uh, a person, you know, in terms of following his desires, it gets so great to the point that he, he leaves a religion. Iyadu billah. Nasallahu alayhi wa so his religion becomes his desires. The meaning of, of the verse, and this is in Surah Al Jafia, have you not seen the one who takes his God? At his, as his desires. Have you not seen the individual who takes his God as his desire? And Allah leads him astray based upon knowledge. Allah puts a seal over his, his hearing and his heart. And he puts a covering over his eyes. So the desire or those evil lusts and desires. This is another God. Most people, when they think about gods, they think about, or false gods, they think about statues, idols, and things that people worship beside Allah. He said, وَالْهَوَىٰ إِلَهُنَ أَخَرْ Person's evil lust and desires is another god. وَلَيْسَ الشِّرْكْ مَقْصُورًا عَلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ الصَّنَمِ أَوْ الْوَثِمِ Don't think that a shirk, polytheism, is restricted to worshiping statues and idols. بَلْ هُنَاكَ شَيْءٌ آخر وهو الهوى. The Shaykh, he says, there's something else, and it is evil lusts and desires. فَقَدْ لَا يَعْبُدُ الْإِنسَانُ الْأَصْنَامُ وَالْأَشْجَارُ وَالْأَحْجَارُ وَلَا يَعْبُدُ الْقُبُورُ لَكِنْ يَتَّبِعُ هَوَى A person might not worship idols, trees, rocks, or graves. However, he follows his desire and lust. هَذَا عَبْدٌ لِهَوَى This person is a slave to his desire. فَعَلَى الْإِنسَانَ أَنْ يَحْذَرُ A person has to be cautious. A person has to be aware. وَلَا يَتَّبِعْ إِلَّا مَا وَافَقَ الْكِتَابَ وَالسُنَّةِ A person cannot follow except that which is in accordance to the book and the sunnah. قَوْلُهُ فَإِنَّهُ لَا حُجَّةَ لَكَ So the statement of the Arthur alayhi rahmatullah where he said, uh, and there's no proof and evidence for you. فَقَدْ بَيَّنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأُمَّتِهِ السنة. The Messenger وسلم, has clarified to his Ummah the Sunnah. And he made it uh, crystal clear to his companions. There's no proof or evidence for the person who opposes and he follows his desire. And this point is important. 
The shaykh is not talking about a person who's ignorant. You have some people, they do things based upon ignorance. He's not talking about the ignorance. He's talking about the person who goes astray after the clarification and the knowledge came to him. And he reiterates the verse. Have you not seen the one who makes his, his desire his God and Allah leads him astray upon knowledge? They suggest him. This person is not ignorant. That يَعْرِفُ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةِ He knows the book and the sunnah. وَيَعْرِفُ أَقْوَالَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ He knows the statements of the scholars. وَلَكِنَّهَا لَا تُوَافِقُ هَوَى However, it doesn't coincide with his desire. فَيَتْرُكَهَا وَيَأْخُذَ مَا يُوَافِقُ هَوَى So he leaves it, he leaves it and he takes what fits his desires. هَذَا هُوَ الضَّلَالِ وَالْعِيَاضُ بِلَهِ This is misguidance and Allah's refuge is sought. And an uh, example of this, which, is, which uh, the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala is mentioning, and this is with regard to a person following their desires, is what we know today as fatwa shopping. Fatwa shopping. A person, for example, they want to do something, and perhaps they already heard that most scholars say it's haram. So a person goes to what they call Shaykh Google. They get on the internet, and they just start, what's the ruling on such and such? And well, like, if you look on the internet, you're going to find anything. Perhaps the, the website you're reading from is from the Shia. Well, like, sometimes you'll put a hadith in, you know, websites are coming up from the Shia. So you'll find whatever you want. If a person really wants to find something that's going to fit his desires, you'll find it. It's very easy. It's a statement from some of the Salaf. They said, Man The person who follows, uh, what's a good word, to tabba'a, a rukhas? Huh? Huh? Tracking. Tracking, no. Yeah, 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 okay. So we just explain like that. So basically the person who is trying to find, uh, you know, those statements or those opinions of scholars that are weak. That are weak. Aqwal shadza. Right, opinions that scholars have made. And sometimes these are scholars that are renowned scholars. Don't get me wrong. We're not saying they're misguided or anything like that. But scholars, every scholar, I don't care who that scholar is. I don't care who the scholar is. They have mistakes. The only person who's ma'asum is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Matter of fact, if you find any person, I don't care who they are. They can say they're salafi. If they say that there's a sheikh, there's a particular sheikh, and this shaykh is ma'asum with regard to certain issues. Then that person needs to check himself. That person needs to make tawbah. You have people who make these type of things. It's such and such shaykh, he never makes mistakes with regard to jahr wa ta'adim. With regard to criticizing individuals and praising them. You've made, you, there's people who have did this. So this is the issue. My point is there's no scholar except that he has mistakes. So the point right here is, the person who follows up, all right, that's the word I, I wanted to, to use. Whoever follows up with uh, the rukhas, are those opinions that are weak. Tazendaqa, this person is going to go, yeah, and he gone astray. Person has gone astray. A person, for example, we just, we've used this issue before, the issue of music. And you have scholars who have said clearly that this ijma', this consensus that is haram. So now a person goes to Google and he looks it up, oh, such and such scholar. And when I even mentioned the, the scholar's name, he said it was halal. He would say it's okay. This is following your desires. This is a clear example of a person just trying to take the opinion that fits his, his desires. And this goes for, with anything else. And we're not talking about ikhtilaf uh, sa'ir, you know, issues whether it's uh, a woman covering her face or wearing yaqab. Or going down in sujood on your knees first or your hands. We're not talking about those type of issues. No, we're talking about issues where there's clear-cut text. And the, as what's apparent is that the strongest position is such and such. And anything else is weak. So when a person does this, this is an example of following your desires. So when you find a person that's like this, uh, what does it say on the internet with regard to such and such issue? issue and you are heard that. Majority of the scholars say it's haram. The, the, the origin is that a person stays away from doubtful matters. 
The Prophet ﷺ said what? مَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدِ اسْتَبْرَى لِدِينِهِ وَعِرُبِهِ A person who stays away from doubtful matters, then he safeguards his honor and his religion. That's the origin. So this is an example of a person following his desires. Fatwa Shafi. قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ لِنَبِيهِ دَاوُدْ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ And subhanAllah, look at this, this verse. Contemplate and reflect upon this verse. Allah Jalla wa'ala is addressing His Prophet. Dawood alayhi salam. وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He's addressing His Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. And do not follow lusts and desires. For it will lead you astray from the path of Allah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَضِلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا نَسُوا يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ Those who lead astray, those who uh, lead astray from the path of Allah, they will have a severe punishment because they forgot the day of reckoning. They forgot the day of judgment. وَلِبْنِ الْجَوْزِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ كِتَابٌ فِي مُجَلَّدٍ ضَقْمٍ اسْمُهُ ذَمُ الْهَوَى and the, the great scholar Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a book. It's, uh, you know, it's a bulky, or it's, a, yeah, it's one volume, but it's a thick volume. It's entitled, Dhamm al-Hawa, Con- uh, Condemnation of Desires. It's translated, I believe. A, com- a condemnation of falling one's desires. أَوْرَدَ فِيهِ مِنَ الْأَدِلَّةِ وَأَقْوَالِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْحِكْمِ أَلَّتِي تُحَذِّرُ مِنْ إِتِّبَاعِ الْهَوَى and inside of this book, Ibn al jawzi he mentions proof and evidences from the book in the Sunnah, as well as statements of the scholars and wisdoms, which warn against following the desires and lusts. So a person has to be cautious and he has to be aware of his desires and lusts. And this is reality for the vast majority of us, alhamdulillah. A person might be saved from worshipping statues and idols and rocks and trees and, and graves. He might know Tawheed and Sunnah. But however, yet he's not saved from following his, his lusts and desires. This is a great calamity. A person has to be aware of following his evil lusts and desires. وَيَكُونَ هَوَاهُ تَبَعًا لِمَا جَاءَ عَنِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. A person, his desire has to follow what the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم came with. كَمَا جَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ As it comes in the hadith, قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يَكُونَ هَوَاهُ تَبَعًا لِمَا جِئْتُ بِهِ It comes in the hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, one of you will not truly believe until your desire follows that which I came with. وَالرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا تَرَكَ شَيْئًا إِلَّا وَبَيَّنَهُ لِأُمَّتِي And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he did not leave off anything except that he clarified it to his ummah. حَتَّى قَالَ بَعْضُ الصَّحَابَةِ Until some of the companions said, مَا تُوُفِّيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَطَائِرٌ يُقَلِّبُ جَنَاحَيْهِ فِي الْهَوَاءِ إِلَّا وَذَكَرَ لَنَا مِنْهُ عِلْمًا They said the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم did not pass away. Except that even the bird that flaps its wings in the sky, he mentions to us something concerning it. He mentions to us some knowledge concerning it. The Prophet ﷺ did not, did not leave off anything that mankind was going to be in need of. Those things are going to get a person closer to Allah. And likewise, staying away are those things that will you know, keep a person away from disbelief and misguidance, except that he clarified it. Ya rahimukullah. Wa qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inni tarikun fikum ma in tamasaktum bih lan tawillu ba'di. And it comes in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am leaving for you. I am leaving for you. That which if you adhere to it, you hold firmly to it, you will never go astray after me. Kitab Allah wa sunnati. The book of Allah and my sunnah. So to conclude, the shaykh, he says, تَرَكَ أُمَّتَهُ عَلَى الْبَيَضَاءِ لَيْلِهَا كَنَهَرِهَا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left his ummah upon a bright, clear path. لَيْلِهَا كَنَهَرِهَا His night is like his day. 
His night is like his day. وَلَمَّا أَكْمَلُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الدِّينِ وَأَتَمَّ بِهِ النِّعْمَةِ إِنْتَقَلَ إِلَى جِوَارِ رَبِّهِ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the religion and He conferred His blessing upon him, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. He returned back to Allah. بَعْدَمَا بَلَّغَ الْبَلَاغَ الْمُبِينَ After uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had clarified or he had conveyed the religion uh, to, to the fullest extent. وَأَوْضَحَ السُنَّةَ لِأَصْحَابِ And he clarified the sunnah to his companions. وَقَالَ فِي خُطْبَةِ فِي خُطْبَةِ حَجَّةِ الْوَدَاعِ أَلَاهِ الْبَلَّقِ And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and this is during the farewell hajj, the farewell uh, pilgrimage. أَلَاهِ الْبَلَّقِ He said, did I not convey, did I not convey the message? قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ قَدْ بَلَّقْ وَنَصَحْتْ وَنَصَحْتْ the, companion, the companion said, we bear witness to the fact that you conveyed the message and you gave sincere advice. قَالَ اللَّهُ مَشْهَدْ So the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh Allah, bear witness. Bear witness to the fact that I, bore wit- uh, that I conveyed the message. And with that, we will suffice for tonight. Uh, I mean, inshaAllah, uh, the next portion we will take it next week. وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ